the, the cursor on the fun, maximum fun. Yeah. Martina Flor, you combine your talents as both a designer and illustrator in the drawing of letters. You grew up in Buenos Aires and studied in Spain and the Netherlands. That's right, okay. And now you live in Berlin and you work on type, lettering, illustration for clients all over the world. You're also the founder of lettercollections.com and co-founder of the project Lettering versus Calligraphy. And you created a series of workshop, Good Type. Your work has been featured in many publications and you are also a teacher so please welcome Martina Flor. So. Bonsoir. Je m'appelle Martine. Je m'appelle Martine. Je habite à Berlin. Et je adore les typographies. That's a few things I remember from, uh, you know, my French when I started, when I was 15. So um, I will just say some random words um, along my presentation. I was also looking, I was also looking for, you know, um, things that I've done before. I I'm going to take this out. All right. I was also looking... Um, you know, for work that I've done that is uh, in French. So I found some stuff. I found this one. I found also um, others that you will see, you know, along the presentation. Uh, but, you know, I, I don't really uh, have any, uh, many images in, in, in French, which I would love to, like, I would love to uh, actually work with that language. I work with many other languages. I work in English. Um, you know, I work in um, Spanish for Spain. I work um, in German for Germany. Um, so yeah, those are some things that I did um, in French. So yeah, I, I'm, I'm a letter and designer. I live, uh, uh, you know, in Berlin. Um, Especially when I'm abroad, I like to say that I run the most successful s lettering studio in, in Germany because no one can prove me wrong <laughs> in other countries. But um, yeah, I managed to, you know, in the, um, in the last five years, I managed to run a studio uh, that only specialize, uh, specializes in lettering and custom typography. Um, so you, you, you will see a lot of imagery going on on the screen. Sometimes it has to do with what I'm saying, sometimes it doesn't. But the idea is that you, you know, you go out of this talk with a novel load of lettering inspiration. Um, so, yeah, I live in Berlin, but as, as, as you mentioned already, I'm not original from there. I was born in Buenos Aires, Argentina. Um, but, you know, I'm one of these people with a big career turn. And I think Berlin has a lot to do with that. Um, I basically started um, doing lettering, or I, I, I started doing lettering full time when I moved to Berlin. Um, I took two very strong decisions at that time. I, um, I actually cleaned my website from all the things that I've done before. Um, and I uh, printed some business, card, uh, business cards that were saying, Martina Flor, letter and there was there was those two things were you know the most important decisions I made to actually start or kick off a career as a letter um, something you should know about Berlin is that it's a city with that is all about type um, there is a lot of type designers and people working with typography in um, uh, in the city so there's meetings that um, you know that deal with that topic um, every month. It's called Tipo Stamtisch. There is conferences in the topic. There is, um, um, you know, a, like a vibrant community of designers um, uh, that um, gets together uh, often. Um, there is even a museum of letters, um, a museum that 
you know, exclusively um, collects um, um, lettering pieces, vernacular lettering pieces from the streets of Germany and puts them into a museum. Um, so yeah, it's all about um, typography. So typography and type are really important issues. Uh, so things like readability, legibility, um, <laughs> clarity, there you go. Um, clarity are really essential topics uh, for the community. And these are, as you've seen, these are all things that my work doesn't necessarily pursue. Uh, my work is rather the opposite, is, you know, colorful, is sometimes unreadable, um, you know, it's, it's uh, more into um, um, telling stories, it's, it's, it's looking to tell a story, to convey an idea, to communicate something. Um, and yeah, for that I use letter shapes, and I use color, I use textures, um, and I create an image that tells a story, or tells the story I want to tell. That's why, in a way, my work, you know, sits in, in this fine line between art and design. And some, it, it really depends, um, um, you know, it really affects the sort of piece I'm, I'm doing, um, whether the client asks me to show my voice through the piece, or and asks me to, you know, to, to say, tell the story that I want to tell, or either asks me to actually tell his story and convey um, his ideas. So yeah, I moved to Berlin. I found out, uh, I f you know, I met this community of type designers, uh, type freaks, um, and I was really insecure if they will actually accept my work, um, you know, being colorful and expressive and uh, all this stuff. If they will actually take it serious, uh, seriously, and um, if they would, if they wouldn't push me into the, you know, the the illustration box instead of taking my letter shapes seriously. Um, but, uh, you know, against all my, my expectations, the community really welcomed me. And they actually trigger my, my work in an expected way. So um, when I, when I uh, started visiting this community and being part of it, my work became much more colorful, much more expressive, uh, you know, much more the opposite of type design. And um, um, yeah, and so it, it, it really, um, you know, this community actually, um, it's, it's, it's most of my colleagues are uh, good friends that I meet all the time. So uh, I guess you, you know some of these guys, uh, especially the students, that's uh, the creator of, of Glyphs, uh, one of the um, um, font editors. Um, is uh, Georg uh, Seifert, that's Thomas Meyer, also a type designer and an is, um, historian. And that's Eric um, Mekablue in, on Twitter. Uh, I have a hard time pronouncing his surname. He's coming, yeah, I know. Or he came already to, to type in Paris. He's coming. Okay, you have fun with him. Um, so yeah, that, and that's my son. So <laughs> I, I'm actually spending a lot of time with these people and a lot of my inspiration comes from, from you know, hanging out with them. Eric loves to do pictures. He's like, a, you know, and yeah, that's uh, my baby. So yeah, and you go on a creative morning once um, and you meet like, Lucas de Grot is one of, if considered one of the, okay, he was last year. Nadine also was here. Um, Martin Wenzel is also like a German uh, type designer. So you casually meet these people all the time. Um, that's me with Lucas de Grot. Um, and he doesn't hack people so often, so I feel very proud of this picture. <laughs> um, um, like, uh, yeah, you know, a, a, um, um, a, a secret or uh, something that not many people know. I, I work for, Lucas is a, you know, a, um, um, a very important type designer, and he does huge Thai families with thousands of weights, and uh, you know he's he's considered one of the greatest type designers in the world. Um, yeah, and I, I I actually work for for a year for him, and uh, when I tell people this, they ask me like, well, I cannot see that in your work at all. Like, uh, it's 
you didn't learn anything from him, so. <laughs> Uh, but I actually learned a lot from him. Um, so this is, uh, you know, um, uh, Alphabetis, some of the Alphabetis, a group of um, yeah. women in type design. Yay. Yeah, you should join them, yeah. Um, again, Erich, um, he loves to take pictures. He's like a compulsive picture taker. Again, in TypeCon. So uh, yeah, I get a lot of inspiration, you know, um, from not so well-known type designers as well. <laughs> on the right, uh, Jean Francois, <laughs> and on the left, Peter Bilak. He's coming also. So this is this is what I call my uh, hall of fame in typography. Um, so I recommend you, if you're into type and you want to make a career out of it, that um, you get some group of type freaks around you that will actually criticize everything you do because this will push you to do a lot better and um, so having this you know big brother sort of um, effect um, will really improve your work so yeah what I, what I basically do is uh, you know storytelling with letters um, and this is not something that I came up with. It's something that is been going on for a long time. And you here in Paris have a lot of this uh, still, you know, on, on the streets, uh, still rema um, remain on streets. Um, you know, Pierre actually showed a lot of uh, good examples of this. Um, these are some lettering pieces found on the streets of, Be of Berlin. And by looking at these signs, you can already see um, that the designer of this um, of these lettering pieces is, you know, looking to tell a story about that stores. I, I can imagine that the, the, the designer that did this was, um, you know, trying to make this store or this cafe look modern and cool, of course, at that time, right? But, um, you know, there is some ideas behind the letter shapes he chose, the technique he chose to reproduce those letter shapes um, you know, I can imagine that the designer of this uh, sign, this is, this is uh, flower, flowers in German, um, you know, was trying to make this store look friendly and, um, and that's why he used this sort of chubby letter shapes and, uh, and rounded um, and he used also a, a color scheme that speaks about you know, organic or um, of nature. I call this one uh, wurst lettering or sausage lettering. Um, and it's actually, it's pretty, it works pretty well because they are actually selling um, meat. Um, so this, th I mean, these signs were, you know, at that time when they were made, there were probably design in paper, like many of the guys are working here uh, in, uh, in uh, Thai Paris, they were designing paper and then later executed in metal or neon or wood. Um, and nowadays, yeah, although we, we, we work by hand sometimes, most of our results are digital. As you have seen, I do digital layering, my layering has a digital result. Um, there's no um, work that I do that is, you know, looking like handmade or has this handmade effect. Um, so I work on, you know, refining the letters into that shape that I want to achieve. And I can only achieve that with um, a digital drawing, like with the precision of a, a digital drawing. Um, and although my result is digital, I work a lot by hand. Um, this is more or less how a commission of mine will uh, run. So I will start with a, you know, a very rough sketch of what I want to do. Um, sometimes I will start with a skeleton if I'm working with a, you know, a, a script typeface, a connected, um, um, sorry, typeface, no, the script uh, letter shapes. Um, I will start using my handwriting and then I will continue improving the, the drawing with um, with layers of 
um, tracing paper of improvement. Um, and I will, you know, take whatever was in the previous drawing that I liked, I will just repeat it, and whatever I didn't like, I would just change it. I would just try um, a different solution. Um, so yeah, it, it goes really fast, as you see. And of course, from, from this drawing, from this first sketch, I would just scan it and then um, um, replicate, replicate the same shapes um, into um, vectors or into a digital drawing. Um, so I would love to be finished after like one minute, <laughs> um, but it, it actually doesn't go that fast. Um, type design and letter design is a very slow moving job. You might have discovered this already. Um, I'm talking to the student when I, when I look at this corner, at the student group. Um, so it's a very uh, slow moving job. Um, and as soon as I, you know, as soon as I decided to um, start my studio in lettering, I, um, I found out that I had to improve my working flow. I had to be able to um, first work uh, on multiple projects at the same time. Um, so maybe work at three or four projects at the same time. And I had to um, be able to discuss my idea with the client. Um, so in this sense, you know, being able to sketch pretty fast and discuss this idea with the client um, was leaving me enough time to later work on the digital drawing uh, on my own. Um, so having the sketch was, you know, the stage where I could um, discuss the idea with the client that he could say, hey, I like that shape or I don't like the, the color scheme or I think the format of the, sh of the you know, the composition is wrong. Um, yeah, and th this really helped me um, actually being able to um, run a studio because I'm, I'm a one woman studio, so I had to um, be able to do all these projects as they were coming in. Um, this was not the only thing I had to learn when I started my lettering studio. Um, this is me during my studies in the Netherlands. I also studied type, type design. Um, you know, as you can see on the wall, uh, my work process was always, uh, you know, black and white. Um, and you should know that, you know, the main difference between type design and lettering is that in type design, you're designing an alphabet that should work uh, in all possible combinations. So every letter shape should work next to another letter and all possible combinations of this um, module or the modular system should should work. Um, in lettering, you are working with a few words or um, with um, a word and your, um, your design should only work for that application. Um, it cannot be used um, after that. It's not a font that you can later use in another project. Um, it is, um, you know, the letter shapes are made exclusively for that application. Um, so I, I was very used to um, have this systematic approach to t letter design, you know, to create an alphabet where all the possible combinations uh, of letters work. Um, and you can see already that during my studies, on, on the background you can see uh, one of my German colleagues uh, totally working on text typefaces. You can see, you know, the, the different um, te uh, text uh, um, tests over there. And I was totally working on the display world, you know, with script type um, uh, faces. And um, uh, I was even doing, trying out um, a Greek uh, brush uh, version. Um, so I could, you know, I could see that although I was working very systematically, all this um, love for lettering was coming out in this, uh, in this work. So this is my Ken Barmer moment. 
is um, this Ken Barber is one of the most renowned letterers in in the world. Can we say that? And um, you should check out his work. He works for House Industries, um, and he was. You know, we had a workshop with him during my studies. You can see in my face that I wasn't seeing the light so often. Um, I was really dedicated a lot of time to for to my project. Um, so, you know, th having a workshop with this guy was actually very uh, illuminating. Um, uh, it was, you know, the first time that I met someone who could, who was actually doing a living from that, who was actually just doing lettering. Um, so this was a little bit like a, you know, a milestone, f a milestone for me, not only because I learned a lot of things from him, but as well because it was the first time that this idea came to my mind. I said like, hey, I could do this. I think I could, you know, make it. Um, but you know, I felt I felt I could do very expressive, extroverted letter shapes. You know, I was one of these people in the class who was, as I show you in the in the picture before, um, one of, one of these people in the class who who were uh, doing like very crazy letter shapes with chunky um, uh, serifs, or um, you know, working with the script um, handwritten. Um, uh, letter shapes. Um, I, I, I've seen that you have some in your class already. I have identified some. And I felt that I could really do expressive letter shapes, but I found at that time I was finding really hard to, you know, take it forward. Like my, you know, the, the farther I would take it is to just add, um, you know, add a color to it. And that was it. Um, so, you know, when starting my studio, I had to actually really work a lot into, um, let me see if this works, yeah, um, into turning those extroverted, crazy letter shapes or very uh, expressive letter shapes into, uh, you know, uh, illustrations that had uh, some depth that had shadow, that had a, a nice color scheme. That was a really, you know, coming from a background where you only work um, with black and white letter shapes. Um, um, coming to a, from that background, jumping into, you know, this world of storytelling, there was a lot of things to learn and to explore. Um, so yeah. For everyone who wants to make a, you know, a lettering um, career after your studies, or even if you, if you if you if you uh, study type design, you have a big card on your pocket to do that. But of course, you have also like a, a lot of um, way to go um, to actually achieve really expressive um, pieces that tell a story. Um, so lettering. You will agree with me that it's the new trend. It's like you hear lettering everywhere. I don't know how it is here in France. Uh, is it something that you, that it's suddenly like everywhere, or yeah, you feel that it's it's much more than before, or okay, um, you know, I feel that I go on Instagram and uh, you know under the hashtag lettering, there's so many things. Um, and of course, there's you know there's good things, there's uh, bad things, there's things that are not even lettering. Um, so yeah, you have a sort of mix of stuff. Um, I I was interviewed by a magazine a few weeks ago, and I was um, I was asked to assess. You know, um, the guy asked me. What happens? What do you think when you, you when you go on the street and you see um, an advertising campaign or a poster that is using a badly executed lettering? Like, what do you feel as a letterer? Um, and it's you know it's it's hard to say. I think I think it's sad for sure. I think you 
Type designers, I, I think many of you are designers, and I bet that when you see on the streets designs that are not, you know, that are not following a certain standard, then you find it sad. Um, I think in this case, the first one to blame in this case is like uh, the art director that actually commissioned this lettering. He uh, or she should know that that's not a well-executed lettering because I bet that that letterer is doing the best he or she can do. I'm pretty sure of that. Um, but maybe she, she or he, need, they need more time to actually get to that point where they do a great job. Um, so yeah, there's this other side, like uh, what about this art director that actually you know, commissioned this lettering and is saying like, okay, it's ready to publish. Um, and I have to say that me as a letterer, I feel as well responsible of that. I feel that I should, you know, give people certain tools to actually recognize uh, if, if I know what is good lettering and what is not, then I should give people, art directors, um, you know, certain tools to actually recognize what is good and what is bad. Because they don't necessarily have to know about this. Um, as well as you don't necessarily need to be a specialist in web design. Um, so I think this, this thing of educating your audience or, you know, the people who will commission your work is very important. So when I, you know, when concerning this phenomenon of lettering being everywhere and not necessarily good lettering, I do two things, or I decided to do two things. I teach, so I teach letterers wannabes, people who want to work in letter design, um, and I give them, you know, tools to actually make a path in letter design with some strong tools that they can use. Um, so I, I have run workshops for the last five years, uh, but I recently published a book. Um, yeah, I published a book. <laughs> <laughs> and you're gonna love it. Um, so I'm gonna show you a preview that is a, pre a premiere. Um, so it's, it's a German edition, uh, the English edition is coming soon. Um, so, you know, in this book, I actually show people first how to train their eye, how to, you know, analyze lettering pieces and look at them critic with a critical eye. Um, so then we go through the basis. I mean, I show, for, for instance, what is Latin script, what is Chinese script, and how do you actually design letter shapes? How can you compare, compare them with each other? Um, there's other concepts, well, how to design figures, how to design punctuation marks, what calligraphy has to do in all this. Um, and, you know, Spielwiese is a playground. How many things we can do with uh, letter shapes, um, which is an uh, it's endless. Or if you want to draw, um, depending on the style you want to draw, a couple of tips that help you, you know, um, get away with that. Um, decorated lettering as a cake, um, you know, structure, um, decorative elements, how to sketch, you know, decision making. I just sketch a lettering and I show how to, you know, what are the decisions I made. Um, How to go to, you know, how to make that into a digital drawing. You know, some tips and things you should have into account into that. Um, how to add color and texture to that. And of course, for those who really want to do a career as a letterer, then I speak about, you know, briefing, telling a story, and I speak about standards. What are your standards as a letter, um, you know, th that you can, you know, as a checklist, like, okay, this is, um, this I have, this one I have also, you know. Um, so, 
you know, for me, it's really important. I, uh, sometimes uh, I, I get this, this question uh, sometimes of like, why do you do a book? You're teaching people to do something good and they will, you know, be your competition at the end. Um, but that's not like, a, um, you know, uh, the right set of mind. You should do your work and do the best and try to, you know, make of the, um, turn the area you're working with um, you know, raise the bar as high as you can. And other people doing good lettering will also raise my bar uh, farther. So, so I teach people how to do it. And I also teach designers, art directors, um, how to identify good lettering, how to tell uh, um, bad lettering from good lettering. So this, in this opportunity with so many art directors and designers. Um, voila, here comes the, you know, the six standards that you have to pay attention to when working with lettering. Um, so one of them is consistency. Is a design decision applied uh, in all the letter shapes? Um, I think something very, imp consistency is a very important concept from type design. Um, this is a, um, you know, one of the first commissions I did when I started working, um, when I opened my studio. Um, and I was asked to do a cover for this magazine, New Statesman, from the UK. Um, and they were, you know, they were, they were speaking about Israel and their conflicts and, um, so they asked me to actually show the reader that they were speaking about Israel. So my inspirations were um, the, their patterns, um, their, you know, the, their carpets that are very typical from Israel. Um, so, and, and I also took inspiration some from Hebrew uh, letter shapes. So um, if you look at the, uh, at the letters in the top, you will see that they all share a certain flair to the shapes that come from um, Hebrew calligraphy. Um, so you can see some consistency in these letters. They all share a certain you know, language, a certain weight. Um, they, they all have um, similar decorative elements. The same happens here. You have, you have different stroke endings. And although they are different from each other, they share a certain logic. They are all using this. Um, um, geometric letter shapes as well on the R. I'm going to fall out of the stage. Um, another artwork for a magazine this time was uh, the Empire magazine. They were doing uh, the Jameson Empire Awards, uh, which is more or less like the Oscars, but in the UK. And we were talking with the the art director about you know getting some inspirations from the 20s and uh, the Great Gatsby movie. Um, so there is a certain uh, decision into you know using um, sort of very um, 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 I how do you call this uh, letter shapes that are you know that have. Um, Weird proportions. If you look at biggest, for instance, they you know they have a short uh, torso and long legs, uh, and this happens also in the top uh, letter. So you know the proportions of the letters are uh, pretty weird, um, and uh, this has inspiration on you know the, the illustration from that time. Um, so, but it's this decision. It's applied on all the letter shapes, um, and you can you can see them all as a family. Um, so, after five years of opening my studio in, uh, in Berlin, um, you know, I told you about how important Berlin was to kick off my career and everything. However, I rarely work for a German client. Um, so this commission came like a year ago. And um, fortunately, they, they keep coming. It seems that you know, lettering is not very um, um, popular in Germany. Um, and, and 
suddenly uh, a lot of people starting to commission uh, uh, lettering and stuff. And of course, I like to believe that I have, I have a lot to do with that. Um, but this magazine is um, a football magazine. So um, I mean, them commissioning a cover from a girl is uh, very groundbreaking. Um, and um, so they asked me to, you know, design the the cover for their magazine. Um, and you can see on the letter shapes that they all share, for instance, um, you know, um, a similar shape for the serifs. They also have, um, you know, very curly um, endings and some decorative curls on the top, uh, also under the, um, uh, the, the lettering. Um, so there's, you know, not necessarily every letter has every one of the features, but, you know, they have a couple of decisions that are used um, across all the letter shapes. And of course, you have a certain effect that uh, affects all the letters. So I also did the, you know, the illustrations inside. Those were like um, quotes from the football players. And you see that although they are different words and you know different texts, they all have um, you know there's elements that are repeating um, often. And of course, the letter shapes have similar serifs, and um, they are using um, similar shapes. So more of that. And I love this this double page with a football player over there. I just leave it for uh, appreci appreciation. Um, so uh, um, consistency was one of them, custom. Um, a lettering, as I said before, has to be done for a certain application that wouldn't be the same without it, that wouldn't make sense without it. So this image without lettering is like, what are these women doing? Um, so this, this was a, a work that I did for Cosmopolitan. Um, and I was, you know, I, they supplied the image and I had to sort of build a universe um, around it, you know, speaking about happiness. Um, this is a spread for the Spiegel magazine. And, you know, the the, 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 this double page makes sense when you see everything together. The, the, you know, not only the lettering, um, is speaking about, you know, is telling a story. Is um, the the article is about the the word Gelassenheit, which is like serenity, serenity in uh, English, and it has its origins in the medieval times. So, you know, the the headline, the lettering in the headline, is inspired in this um, medieval um, illuminated books, and of course, the you know the art director I was working with. Um, was doing, um, um, you know, a, a page design that had to do with this sort of uh, designs of, of, of those times. So everything works together, and it's um, it's made it's meant to be together. This is a work that I did a long time ago um, for Etsy, the shops, uh, the, the 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 office of Etsy in Berlin. They were opening their office and. You know, they were celebrating this. So they asked me to do a lettering for that that will um, be festive. And so I did a lettering with serpent serpentines. It's something that you yeah, know about, okay. And, and this was meant to be, you know, drawn in their walls. My, my teeth are looking very white <laughs> on this picture. <laughs> Um, but you know the, the the design was made for that um, application, and uh, the confetti was sort of um, um, on the ceiling and on the floor, and the the lettering itself totally changed the space. So when the people would come into the to the office, you know they would sort of be immersed in this um, new atmosphere. Third principle detail. Um, I think this is what makes 
um, a, 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 you know, a very distinctive tool um, for design. I think that, you know, the Larry has the great advantage that it, it only has to um, um, solve a certain, you know, a word or a certain amount of uh, letters, or even sometimes you have to solve a set of numbers. So if you only focus on these letters, word, or numbers, then you, you can afford to um, dedicate enough time to add um, embellishments and details, which sometimes in a type project is very complex. Um, I mean, replicating this amount of, del of, letter of uh, detail into a font, a typeface, where you have to have all, you know, the from A to Z, all the numbers, all the punctuation marks, it would be like a, you know, like an, an, end, uh, an endless project. So I think, you know, the, the level of detail um, in, in lettering should be high and uh, not necessarily because it, has, it needs to be really decorative, but because the shapes have, have to be enough refined and, um, you know, the embellishments you can have in a, in a, in a piece um, are, um, you know, it's um, fairly much more than the one you can ask from a typeface. Um, so that was a commission for a magazine in the U.S. Um, this, I, I normally do, um, I got, you got this today. Um, I, I, you know, every year I do a piece that I send to my clients and colleagues and, um, you know, I sometimes I experiment, sometimes I just do a nice design that I like them to have. Uh, and this time I experimented with uh, laser cut. So I, I started with the idea of just using la laser cut. And I wanted, you know, I explored the, the idea of how do you turn a decorative design, which is very much what I do, uh, into a stencil. I mean, the, the, since the pieces are gonna um, be cut off of the, you know, of the cardboard, then you have to, you know, find the places where these letters will stick together. So you have to have certain cuts, certain parts where the, you know, the letter shapes um, sort of stick together. Otherwise, the whole design will fall out. Um, so this was a very detailed work of, you know, how to turn a decorative design into a stencil. Um, and since I was just working with, with that text, I could, you know, do all the tests, um, add all the details I wanted, um, because I, I just had to solve this. Uh, imagine to do that in, you know, a whole typeface. Um, so, yeah, th then after I was using this as a stencil to stencil, you know, to spray my envelopes, um, and send the card into that envelope to, the, to my clients and colleagues. So detail, take note. Story, storytelling. Um, um, is the piece of artwork conveying the story you want to convey? Um, so this is, this is one of the one, uh, um, magazine covers that I did recently. Um, and I think there's not much to explain, and that's, that's great. We, um, when, when I work with the storytelling, this concept, I actually take things from your, you know, that we all have in, in our minds, in our um, imaginary, that, um, you know, gold means um, rich, and um, that um, decorative things are very, um, y yeah, you know, like very, um, Flourish um, things are more fancy, so I, I just take these very um, common ideas that we all have in our mind, and I work with that, and I turn that into letter shapes, and I use that, uh, you know, to choose a, um, a certain color scheme or certain um, letter shapes. Um, so this, um, the story I'm trying to convey is that the issue is about money. And you know, readers should actually get the story in the first glance. 
Um, here the concept was a little bit more complex. This is for, we transfer the file sharing system online platform and they actually, I don't know if you can see by the contrast, they actually were trying to illustrate the word workflow. Um, so yeah, it's about, you know, making two words that are apparently opposite um, turn into one image. Um, five, good letter shapes. The letter shapes should be, you know, excellent. They should look amazing. Um, and this all has to do with whatever I said before, consistency in the shapes, um, you know, detail. So the letter shapes should really look great. And the last principle is that it should be novel, it should be new. Um, you know, that also applies for all of you. And I bet many of these standards actually apply for whatever you're doing. Um, I will show you two last projects. This is a, a book, um, some book covers that I did for a, for a publishing house in the UK. Um, and they were, um, they wanted to illustrate these bestsellers from Laura Emischlitz. And the, the stories uh, happen in Victorian time. So, you know, they asked me to get some inspiration from Victorian time. Um, and, of course, I went through a lot of Victorian designs. However, I'm not sure if you go and look into Victorian um, um, specimen books or Victorian uh, design um, uh, pieces. I'm not sure if they would draw a D that, le that looks like this or an H that looks like that. There's some, um, you know, there's some inspiration, some elements that I took from that time, but it's not necessarily a replica of whatever was done in that time. Even when it's like, you know, many years ago, um, um, I think your, your work should always have a certain contemporary take. Um, so the same happens with this. Um, it's also inspired in Victorian time, but I'm not sure if they would draw that G with that strange serif, like coming out like this. Um, you can say better, I, I don't know. But you know, all in all, um, it, it works. You know, it conveys the story. Um, and at the same time, it's not replicating something that was done before. Um, so yeah. Those five, six uh, standards um, is something that you should pay attention to because, you know, it's not only about Instagram. I mean, it doesn't really change anyone's life if you like a picture that is not actually really good or uh, like a lettering piece that is not actually really good. Um, or if you follow, um, you know, a calligraphy and you think that's lettering, a calligrapher and you think that's lettering, it doesn't really matter what happens in this layer. Um, but there will be a moment where you will have to, you know, work with lettering and we will have to maybe commission um, a job to a letter and then you need to know what makes a good work, uh, what makes a good lettering piece because this will affect directly the sort of design and the quality of the design you're delivering. So I hope this, this is useful for you and it's uh, useful for also the people who actually wants to um, um, make a step into lettering. Um, so thank you very much for having me. Leave the slide. Thank you so much. Hello. So it's the question time. Oh, there is one question here. You talked about a six rule that we have to follow to have the lettering and I got the same thing to this. I haven't heard the second. I haven't heard the second and the last, maybe because you talked about a consi consistency, detail, storytelling, uh, letter shape. Custom? Which, which custom? 
Ah, yes. No, Help me. New hand. So I will have um, consistency, detail. Custom, okay, custom, detail, okay. storytelling, uh, good letter shapes, and novel. Okay, thanks. Thank you. Another question here, Frank. Thank you for this great uh, presentation. Um, we, ob we obviously see, uh, see we, we obviously saw that uh, our, our unique and uh, lovely um, um, lettering uh, is in comparison with a, a typeface. Nevertheless, how do you an analyze the fact that some um, uh, letterers uh, uh, do uh, type, uh, type design? Uh, for instance, uh, w w um, Jessica Ish, we still release by Font Bureau, and um, and the cruel lettering w w w inspired uh, uh, le uh, type design. How do you, do you analyze this? That's cool. I, I also have I, I did some type designs as well. I always say that if I if I do you know if I embark myself into a type design project, it has to be like a very amazing idea that I feel that, you know, I'm the person who was born to do this. And uh, I really have to feel that I'm the messiahs and, you know, I have to bring this to the world. Um, otherwise, it's very hard to make it fit into your lettering commission rhythm, um, which is, you know, a, a type design project it tends to be, um, very extensive, uh, extended in time, like they take, you know, months, years. <laughs> yeah, 15 years, yeah. <laughs> and, um, and a lettering commission might last maybe three days, maybe one week. Um, so I think, um, I think it's totally possible that you actually, um, you know, as a letterer, you can totally do type design, I think. Um, you know, I think it's, it's just a different process you have to do. As well, when you're doing a typeface, um, you know, typefaces don't work with the concept. They don't, they don't tell any story. You know, a typeface is just a typeface. And whenever y one of you buys that typeface and use it and put it, put it in context and use it with a certain imagery and certain colors, that typeface acquires a certain meaning. But the typeface itself doesn't have any storytelling. Uh, maybe it has some inspiration in shapes or whatever, but it, uh, okay. And, but you know, the, the lettering has a very different process. The lettering is all about storytelling and how you use that, those letter shapes, how do you design those letter shapes to tell a story. Um, so I think as a letterer, you really have to get rid of all this, all of, you know, working with concept and storytelling, and actually, you know, get down and like make those letter shapes work in all possible combinations. But if you have a skills into drawing letter shapes, you can totally um, make a typeface. I, yeah. I, I don't know if it, this answer. I think you can leave an imprint even when you do lettering and it's just using one so magazine it's cover. It's another way to leave it. So the people who sure. play with their uh, with visual uh, language even the, the when they are not there. Yeah, that's true. That's yeah, the same you can at the same time you can get some royalties every month, which is pretty <laughs> sweet. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I mean you have to also like it. I mean the royalties don't make the whole fun. <laughs> yeah. So, any question? Do you have a question? Yeah. Alors. Um, alors, alors quoi? Alors. Um, what, is there is a common um, reference to type designer like to see their typeface in use by other graphic designer? You know, we always, every type conference, there is one type designer saying that I do typeface and after a graphic designer use the typeface in a good way, a bad way, unexpected way, something will change uh, the mind of the type designer. He loves that. 
on, on you have some reference to the clients, you have to educate the clients to, 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 f to select the good lettering, but when you do lettering, in fact, you are the full boss of what's happening. I mean, okay, the client have good taste or not, but nobody will, will use your lettering. He just puts the lettering on one double spread of magazine or poster, but it's not someone else who use your lettering to do something like that. How do you feel about that? The, the, two, the two worlds. Oh, oh, yeah. Yeah, it's really those two different do worlds. Yeah. Do, do you select, do you choose to do lettering because of that thing or? Well, I have to talk that with my therapist. Yeah, I mean, it's true. Like you, you know, as a letterer, you have full control. And that's, you know, it, it feels good, I guess. <laughs> um, at the it's same time, it, at it, it, because you are too perfectionist, that you don't want to see anyone using badly or. Could be. Um, could be. Yeah, I never thought of this, but <laughs> no, but what I mean is like at the same time, you know, there's, uh, I, I think also one of the main difference of type design and lettering is that in your case, like in the case of the type designers, you rarely have a client. You might have a client, but he doesn't really no, exactly. He really trusts on what you're doing. Like, uh, so you you more or less like work on the design on your own. And on a lettering commission, you will your client has a lot to say about that because you have a lot of you know layers of information. Not only the letter shapes, which maybe he he cannot really assess that uh, in case it's not a well informed art director, but. Um, but also you have, you know, a color scheme, you have a, a story that you're telling. So he has a lot to say, like the art director has a lot, or that the creative director has a lot to say. So it's true that you have control on the letter shapes and the way they are applied and on the artwork that you're delivering. But at the same time, you have a lot of input of someone else into that design. Um, and I think, I think that's actually a cool thing of the job that, um, you know, I, I, I work with people that really know about what they are doing, like a, a magazine editor really knows w what their audience want and what their audience are um, um, attracted to and he can really turn my designs into something, you know, take it to the next level with his input. Um, you know, whereas type designers, whenever they don't do a custom typeface, they're just, you know, doing a design that they, they, um, you know, that they want. Like they, yeah, yeah, there's no one who can say anything about this. Um, yeah, later, later the users will complain, hey, there's uh, diacritics missing or whatever, and you will have to reply to that. But, um, yeah, I think, I think uh, it's, um, you know, it's missing a part of the story to think that you have control over every, everything when you're doing lettering. Is uh, you actually have to negotiate stuff with people, yeah, with yes. our directors and editors and stuff. Okay. Yeah. Oh. I don't. It uh, answers your question. Nice question. Yeah. So another question, or it's the last. No. So maybe ah, there is one question here. Yeah. Uh, maybe can give you the mic. I just have uh, one question about dig digitaling uh, the type in Illustrator. It's really a hard part now because it's really, really hard now. I mean, it's, uh, we are really need to, to learn the technique. To it draw, to draw. To in draw in a vector, vector shape with uh, Yeah, totally. Tools. Totally. No, because I try a lot of uh, <laughs> times and it's really hard, no? Yeah, I think I the mean technique it really defines how successful your lettering could be. Like, uh, With you know, in terms of, uh, of, of, you know, the technique has an impact of, on how, on the quality of your, the technique to draw digitally yeah. on yeah. vectors. Because when you draw with a pen, it always changes when you vectorize a little, you know. 
it's not really exactly the same shape. I mean, um, no, of course, when this is not like the point of the digital. Uh, yeah, of course, when you like when you when you are working on a design by hand and then you move on to the computer, then you know your your design keeps um, moving Move, on. Mo you know, you keep doing, making some decisions yeah, and yeah, yeah. you know changing some shapes and yeah. stuff. Um, uh, but yeah, of course, like when you when you draw something by hand, it has a very different approach than when you go on the yeah, computer. Yeah. Um, you know, everything that on your paper, um, you know, your hand sketch looks more or less good. Whenever you go to the computer, all these shapes, um, by using vectors, by drawing those shapes with vectors, uh, become mu much more sharp and much more defined. So every little bubble or bump that you have on the shape, it will like um, jump on your eyes right away. Like you will really notice um, that there's a mistake or there's something wrong. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, t the technique you use to draw digitally, it's really important um, mm. to have a successful design. Yeah. Oh yeah. Okay. yeah. When can we buy your book? <laughs> I hope very soon. Uh, it, the, the English version is, I'm working on it right now, and since the book is like 50% made by hand, you know, you saw these notes and stuff. It really takes a lot of time. I'm sorry. I try to work as fast as I can, but, <laughs> but I have to write everything by hand again. Wow. Okay. So it was the last question. So Jean-Francois, it's the time to, to make a huge clap and say thank you. Yeah.